Have you ever wondered if you've missed your prime time to start trading and building wealth? Have you thought that the ship has sailed? Well, in today's episode, we're going to tackle that nagging fear head on and show you why it's never too late to join the trading game. Yes, sir. Welcome yeah, to Mike. The trading podcast. Oh, <laughs> I'm Mike, and here is my good friend, Dennis. Hey, man, Mike, I tell you, I hope you had a, I know you had a wonderful uh, Easter and all that kind of stuff with your wife and your lovely little girl. And we did hear also, uh, we actually had Easter service in a parking lot. Easter service in a parking lot? Well, why yeah. did you have Easter service in a parking lot? Well, our, our, our church just launched a new location and we'll get to, we'll get to the rest of the story, folks. Hang in there. I'm waiting, you know, as people come in. And so we had our first service at this particular base underneath the awnings in the parking lot that that mm -hmm. hold up, you know, where you park. And it provided exceptionally wonderful shade from the hot Hawaii sun. Okay. And, it, and, and we had like over 600 people at this new church's kickoff for, for, thanks, for Thanksgiving, for, for Easter. So it was really awesome. So, yeah, hey. Just Great topic today, Mike. I, I'm really looking yeah. forward to it, you know, because one is I'm in the generation that a lot of my friends think, oh, it's too late. I can't do anything. And they want to sit on their butts and not do anything. Well, they, in fact, could. It reminds me a lot of something that happened to me recently, you know, and it really strikes a chord with me because I recently received a phone call from a good friend and and he was he was going, Dennis, Dennis, he goes, he goes, I've messed up. And he was a young man. He was, you know, in his, you know, early forties, he goes, I really messed up. He goes, I haven't started planning and for investing. I don't know how to play it, you know, work in the stock market and all that kind of stuff. And he was literally losing sleep over this aspect of thinking it's too late. And it was really eating on him. I mean, it was just chewing on him. And and Tom, you know, this guy, absolutely, you know, I just call him Tom for right now. But he's the rock of his family. I mean, he's strong. He's a great husband, a great father. and But he was really afraid that he wasn't going to be able to provide for his family. And so he's grappling with, grappling with this question, you know, is it too late to turn things around and start trading and learning how to invest? And, you know, it was a real heart to heart conversation that he and I had because I firmly believe, you know, as the ancient trader, you know, <laughs> I firmly believe that it's never too late to one, become the, the person you always wanted to be and also become the master trader you could be so i'm excited about it. so so how are we going to hammer hammer this out and so because well, that yeah you know that I, i've gone through gym, similar journeys uh myself too man now uh i, I know this might, might come as a shock but well we're in different generations uh <laughs> yeah uh, but uh, but well you know it, it's interesting because I, I was, uh, as you you were telling that story, I, I was all, also thinking that yeah, like I, I felt, felt like I'm late uh, in some regards too, and have felt late at different stages uh, of the cycle. Like oh man, uh, like I want to start making money now, but like uh, like uh, it's too late, and then like uh, you get to another point uh, in your life, uh, and now there there's kids. Oh well, now it's too late to start building for them and i think that the feeling of being behind the eight ball or or, or feeling late to the game is yeah. is a common one so uh, i'm curious uh because uh, you said that uh, you know you you you're beyond that uh, right uh, and and you have a, a positive attitude uh, oh, I have a job. So, so how did you get to that that state or did you always, were you always just a, a positive, upbeat guy and, and had that kind of belief? Uh, you know, normally I am a 
optimist. I am. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a glass, you know, the glass is, you know, half full kind of guy. I got that from my dad. And um, believe it or not, I had two examples in my life, parental examples, my mom and my dad. My mom was extremely negative. She had limited, you know, limiting beliefs and false beliefs that that she accepted as her reality. And she she basically took that to her grave because mom passed away a couple of years ago. And the last like five years of her life, she was all you know, crumpled up and crippled up due to, you know, real bad arthritis and all that type of stuff, which I firmly believe was brought on, she, it brought on by her negative attitude and negative belief system. And my dad, on the other hand, you know, uh, he literally passed away in my arms. And, and I'm, and I'm not, you know, I'm saying this because to the final hour, he was going, we're going, I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. He wound up dying of cancer. I'm going to get better. And um, I, and I get a little bit teary eyed about this because dad would got, went into kind of a, 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 a drug induced kind of coma type of thing. And, and, and I was lifting it up so we could wash him a little bit. And, but he came out of it. And his eyes cleared for just a minute. And he looked in my eyes and he went from my arms into God's arms. And I'm telling you this because I want to be like my dad and have that positive attitude. I want to you know, know that it's not too late. It's not too late because... Uh, and that was the way my dad was. And so, you know, I encourage everybody to kind of grab hold of that concept. And I am really sorry. You're going to have to continue on, Mike, for a second while I catch hold of myself here. <laughs> That's an absolutely beautiful story. And God bless you and God bless your dad. And thank you so much for, for sharing that that bit of you with us. Mm, thanks. So I... I'd love to get some of your perspective on the on this guy Tom because uh, I'm I'm real curious if he had that kind of positive influence in his life and if he didn't because uh, you know so many of us don't. Oh yeah, so many of us don't have that kind of positive influence. How, how could we? You know, what do you say to the to those people? Well, you have to find it. You have to find I mean, it. seriously, I mean, you know, seriously, yeah, self-assessment. But let's say that don't use the excuse that, well, I don't get any inspiration around my, you know, when I was growing up. Find your inspiration now. And there's a lot of great places, I think, to find inspiration. Uh, I, I think that, you know, I just recently discovered audiobooks. And, mm -hmm. and I'm listening to the great people like, you know, Earl Nightingale and some of his way he's lived, you know, Zig Ziglar, um, uh, and listening to Mark Minavini's book on mindset of a winner. And we'll give a plug to Mark's book, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but having that plugged into your ear, it, it, it really is true, you know, because what you think about, you will tend to bring about. And so you got to get rid of the crappy thoughts and replace them with good thoughts. Yeah, so I don't know if I answered your question or not, but how about you? I think that's a fantastic answer. Well, I mean, you know, about? there's so many uh, great things, arguably so many negative things that comes along with social media and Internet and just access to, to everything. Sure. But, but we have the God's grace of free will and to choose what we want. So if we choose well, then we could build our environment to be uh, fantastic. Yeah. Right? Uh, like uh, to be able to have uh, great influencers in our ear, uh, oh, yeah. in front of us, uh, all around uh, filling our minds all day That's long. Right. 
And so, yeah, one of the things that I always like to say also, and here, here's one of those other plugs, is I know this guy named huh. Mike Lamont. If you're looking for also how to get your mindset straight, this is a great book. We will put a link in it in the description as we post this to YouTube a little bit later on. Uh, Thank you, but Mike, I, I appreciate that. You, you, the one year anniversary uh, is right around the corner. Oh, cool. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty cool, too. That is exciting. So, so Mike, yeah, it, it, you know, the other thing that I think is really important, you know, besides, you know, changing your mindset, finding something out there that is more important than you. Mm. Because, you know, people ask me, why the heck do you, you know, why are you still coaching and teaching and mentoring and all that kind of stuff? Well, well, you know, when I could be, well, one, I don't believe in retirement. Secondly, uh, is that God has given me just and, and allowed me to develop such a deep level of understanding about the markets and all that kind of stuff. And I want to pour that into as many people as I possibly can. Now, I, 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 I make that as an offering to them, but recognizing that they have a responsibility also. Uh, you know, oh, sure. the, yeah, I, I heard this thing the other day by this young man. He, he was basically saying, you know, planning is not the thing. Talking about it is not the thing. Uh, and he went on and went on and, and finished up with, Doing it is the thing. And so, you know, we got to, we, we, you know, many times a person can get stuck in the rut of I'm going to start, I'm going to start, and I'm going to start until finally they feel in the end of the ruts and they just put the, you know, dirt on top of them. I think Ben Franklin said it very succinctly when he said, most people die when they're 25 years old, but aren't buried until they're 75. And I heard that, that that's a sad reality. So many people. And I I am not gonna be that person. And so, so I mean, I love work. You know why I love working with you, Mike? Is one, you're about the same age as my sons. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, well, well, which is crazy. Which is <laughs> crazy, but but I, I love it. Uh, I, I love it uh, on many different levels, but uh and, uh, and working with you helps keep me rejuvenated and invigorated mm -hmm. and helps keep me keep thinking. So, so uh, you know, and I appreciate because a lot of times young men in, in, in you know, at your age, you know, are, are just young people. They, you know, kind of discount what, you know, a senior has to offer. But let me tell you, the ancient trader has a lot to offer. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it, it, there's a lot of wisdom can, uh, that can be gained. But it, yeah, that, there's a, a difference between the, like a wise old man and a wise old fool. Mm. And, and you need to uh, be able to differentiate uh, between the two. Just because someone has a lot of experience, they could be uh, have a lot of experience heading the wrong way. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and so that, that's why... Uh, or one of the many reasons why I, I, I count my blessings for God bringing you here uh, into my life and connecting us. Uh, it's it's fantastic. Thank you, man. I really appreciate, I appreciate that. it. So, hey, I'm gonna let me ch um, shout out to the folks online. Hey, if you're yeah. online, let us know where you're dialing in from. A state is okay. Uh, appreciate the comments so far, uh, and but just let us know where you, and. If you have any questions that Mike and I can answer specifically about this you know, aspect of being too late, you know, please, you know, put those into the uh, uh, to the chat box. And so, one of the other things, Mike, that I'm excited about, and before we segue into the next section, because I'm gonna you know, give you the you know you will have Mike will have the mic to talk about this mindset issue, is. In the very near future, Mike, we're going to actually have the podcast available over on, on Spotify. Spotify. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, all those spots. Wow, that's cool. And yeah. so, anyway, so yeah, we'll we'll let people know that. So we'll be on Spotify. 
and not, which is different than Shopify. But anyway, but they have been good stock. Both of them have been good stocks. So as we segue in, you know, we talk about legacy beyond, our, you know, beyond age, uh, all the things that should be motivating us to recognize it's not too light and to at least start. So uh, let's kick into the next section where just the mindset exploration, Mike, of, of how about dealing with dealing with all of this, you know, this mindset, uh, uh, you said that the story of Tom hit home with you. So, so I'm listening. You yeah, know. The part of it is wanting, uh, you, you, you understand that things take time, uh, things take mm. time to grow and that there's a process, but there's the element of, uh, but I'm hungry now and I want to eat now. So it's like wanting the fruit before the tree is grown. And so I think that there's an element of uh, patience that's involved. Um, and I think that one of the challenges for someone there that's in that spot, and I speak both from people that I've coached and from my own personal experience well, with this as well, wanting the to have the, the income and the money and those sorts of things coming now and starting to chase profits, starting to mm. chase gains, looking on the PL. Well, what's going to get me the biggest bang for my buck right now? And then, yeah, maybe uh, later on I'll uh, learn a little bit more about compounding and, you know, going the, uh, the, the slow and consistent route. But the, what could get me these uh, quick wins now? Right. Mm. And I would look at it as a quick win. Unfortunately, well, what would happen is that sometimes you get a quick win and then, you know, you're thinking, all right, yeah, I'll go over there. But the, it's almost not like a drug, right? Like mm -hmm. you get this and, and it feels so good that you just got this big win. And it's just like, all right, that, uh, let, let's go for more. And you do the same thing. Well, if that first process that you did to get that big win had some holes in it, like Swiss cheese, well, uh, I learned the hard way and as many others have that uh, you could quickly lose that way. And so for a while I was a boom and bust trader. Yeah. So I think that part of the question becomes how, how do you break the cycle? And uh, to, to circle back to the point that you made earlier, Right, like how do you get a better environment? Well, you just have to do it, right? Like, like it, it it's uh, no ifs, ands, or buts. Like it's just breaking it, right? like breaking that cycle, like like and just starting, starting small, starting consistently. Like okay, like where I'm going is not working. So there's that element of it. Yeah, it's the element of coming to the awareness that what I've been doing is not working. So if I expect that what I'm doing to start to produce different results than what I've already had, then that's insanity, right? I believe that was Einstein's definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. Right. So, so if that's the case, then we need to do something different. Now, that can be easier said than done, right? Breaking habits is hard. So how do we break habits? Well, there was a very interesting, um, very effective strategy that I learned from Tony Robbins. Uh, his strategy well, was called the, the Dickens uh, strategy, the, the Dickens story. Do so you like Charles Dickens? Well with, uh, I'm sorry. Like Charles, Charles yep. Dickens? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly like that, right? So... Uh, we're all familiar with the story of the three ghosts uh, and how uh, Ebenezer uh, ends up having this major transformation. So right. uh, the way to do it, if we want to break this habit, if we know that the where what we've been doing is leading us off in the wrong direction, then we first admit that. Next is, okay, if I hold on to this habit for another year, just keep on doing the same thing, you know. Like ah, you know, like I do want to change, but change is hard, so I'm gonna stay right here. Year goes right. by. Well, where are we gonna be? Oh well, mm. what kind of results are we gonna have? Yeah. Uh, 
Five years goes by. Well, well, what kind of, well, where are we going to be then? Well, how about uh, what's going to be the effect on the people that you care about? Mm. Those around you, your life, your family, your children, your grandchildren. Well, 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 how about that? Ten years yeah. goes by. You, you haven't changed anything. And eventually you get to this point where uh, holding on it to the old ways just becomes so incredibly painful that it, it becomes unacceptable. And that's mm -hmm. when you're finally ready for change. Now, mm -hmm. when you're ready for change, it, it's important to start to get clear on what the change that you want to make is. Because if you just like, ah, I'm done with this and you blow it up and now you're ready to put something else in there. Well, if you don't know what's good, then you might end up putting something else that's not good there. So you uh, want to get clear on what is good. Well, in this case, well, what is a successful strategy? Mm. Well, 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 what's going to help me compound quicker? And so you, you and I were talking offline and you had this fantastic strategy. Well, with uh, some ETFs and some leveraged ETFs that can actually help you compound uh, dramatically faster than, uh, you know, just even holding on to the standard SPY or QQQ. And I thought that it was amazing. Sure. And we are going to share a little bit of that later. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But you gotta, uh, people to have that. to hang on. To, people have to hang on here. You mentioned something. Let me ask. May I ask a question? Yes, please. You at, you mentioned something about changing your habits uh, of rehearsing or going back over and asking yourself the question. If I don't change, where will I be a year from now? Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. two years from now, three years, five years from now, and all that kind of stuff. And also, bring in bringing in the concept of where will your family be? Whoa, that's that's heavy, man. Uh, do you also suggest that a person not just think about that, but let's get serious here. If you write it down on paper, it's going to have a better potential of sticking. And it becomes more real. Do you suggest that people write out their, you know, they don't have to share it with anybody, but write out their story of where they could be, you know, if things don't change. And then on the flip side of that, if I do adopt new habits, how things could be, that's very powerful too. Do you suggest they write it out? Yes, absolutely. Especially if you're doing this by yourself. Uh, there, there's something about taking what's in your mind and putting it to paper. It's like mm. praying on paper. I've heard that term before. Yeah. Praying on paper. And, and you know, as you're writing it out, you it, it does a couple of different things for you. One, it's slowing you, your mind down a little bit, right? Because you could think a lot quicker there than you could write. Right. So, so as you're you know, writing this stuff out, you can start to see it come out. Then later on, when you come back and you look at it, you're able to look at it from a third person perspective. Yeah. And uh, like you're able to see like that, you know what? Well, I actually don't agree with half of this uh, that was uh, in here, right? And then, well, we could start to come to the realization that, hey, we're not our thoughts. Mm. So I could pick and choose what I want to believe in. And I don't know about you, but I want to believe in things that are going to help me. Exactly. Help me, yeah. help me in life, help, uh, help my family and get to. Well, whatever the objective is. So now we're in a position where we could start to be like, oh, you know what, the, this, let, let's scratch this out and let's put something better in its place. Mm, yeah, well, cool. writing it out is is a very good exercise. Okay. On both, si on both sides of it, uh, on, on both the thinking through where you're going to be if you don't change, but then also the flip side of that, because that starts, I, I, I think, that if you write out where you could be if you do change, that flips the switch to let it in your imagination grow into a better future and a better legacy because a better legacy starts with a thought. It does. But getting it on paper puts the thought into at least the first step of action. Yeah. Yes. It, it makes it real. It makes it tangible. Yeah. It That's makes it where somebody else could see it. If yeah. you wanted to show it to them. 
So yes, it, all that is very important. All the, these exercises are, are actually detailed out in uh, the Trading Mind Wheel book. Too. Yeah. So, yeah. What? Um, let me ask you a couple. Of, uh, another question is: You mentioned, you know, and, and you identified some incremental things, but you and I have both been talking about how do we help people become winners, um, mm. and part of that what we discussed was maybe when a person first starts trading, they have the wrong idea what it means to be a winner. Cause they think about, well, if I make a whole bunch of profits, well, that's, that's my main measurement of winning. Um, but if we wanted to help somebody improve their mindset and also improve this limiting belief, not just of it's too late, but other limiting beliefs, what would be like five incremental steps? What, what would be, you know, that they could take that step one, be successful, celebrate the win, which, which uh, helps them, you know, uh, uh, which helps with them to continue going, but what would be incremental steps they could do to start changing their mind? You, you, you mentioned a few, but. Oh, sure. So, so baby steps uh, is uh, is an important one. Uh, I think that a lot of people, well, when they hop on to YouTube or to Twitter or to Instagram, all these spots, that you're seeing somebody's final chapter versus their first chapter. Mm, that's good. So the, if you're starting out on chapter one, don't compare your chapter one to somebody's final chapter. Mm. Okay. Right. So, uh, and to give yourself that grace, it's good to see where you could end up, right? Like, like, like that's inspiring. Right. I take a lot of inspiration from seeing where uh, the success stories uh, and, uh, you know, that I, I take that as motivation. A lot of people, and I used to do this too, uh, is uh, to beat myself up over it uh, and mm. to use it as a negative comparison. And I've heard this term, too, that comparison is the thief of joy. Wow. Well, don't compare somebody's first chapter, uh, your first chapter to their last chapter, because if they compared their first chapter to their last chapter, they, they would feel uh, just as cruddy as you do uh, by comparing your first chapter to their last chapter. Exactly. Uh, baby steps. It's good to know the, the last chapter so you can know the direction of, okay, that's where I want to go. How do I get there? Reverse engineer it. Mm. And then be like, okay, well, well, what's the first step that I need to do? Well, maybe the first step is uh, reading a book that'll help give you a sound strategy or listen or, or start to build your environment. If you have, uh, if you want to start having more positivity in your life and uh, in your space, yeah, start building that out. And find out well what a, what a great trading strategy is. Well, one that works and one that works well for for you that you're able to uh, execute well that you that makes sense um, and, and that can help lead you to your goals. Uh, okay. All those things are, are important. And then, as you're starting to learn, then you're, and you're taking action by learning and doing and taking action and now you have this environment you're starting to build a little bit of momentum for yourself you're starting to gain a little bit of confidence and that's something that is a ball that could keep on rolling and growing and getting bigger and uh, yeah. you have this giant ball of confidence uh which uh is a great place to be cool so you know one of the things uh, as we get ready to transition into the next section is um, tell me what you think about this. My wife and I, okay, my wife, Michelle, yeah, yeah, on the 20th of April, we will have been married 50 years, right? So that's oh, awesome. That's, that's phenomenal. You know, it's amazing uh, that... Uh, Let's say the date again. Huh? April. April, April, April 20th. April 20th. Yeah. You know, if I if I you know if I would have known what I know now, I would have probably done a better job, and and uh, we would have actually got married in December for the tax breaks. But that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Shh, don't tell her; she might be listening. No, um, 
absolutely love this lady. And we have started celebrating our wins. In the evening when we sit down and have dinner together, which we do that every, you know, every uh, evening, Turn off the every, all the you know all the the no, not in front of the TV. We sit at the table, the dining table, and actually have dinner. Mm -hmm. um, we've started saying, "What were your wins today? Hmm. What were your wins?" She, she, Michelle, shares her wins with me. I share my wins with her, and they're just one or two, just one or two. We don't go, and then we celebrate. Now, this sounds silly, but we celebrate our wins. And we'll be going, yeah! <laughs> and let me tell you, one, it's fun. But you know what it, it, those seeds do? Those seeds lead to more wins. Hmm. Anyway. Well, that, that that's it. fantastic. Uh, are, are you able to, to share a, an example or two uh, of, uh, of, of some of these wins? Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're simple. I mean, they're simple. Uh, Michelle and I are both doing some, some master level courses. Okay. Uh, one I'm, I'm doing one. I have a, I, I hired a speech coach. <laughs> um, and, and so he's helping me become a better speaker. Right. And so a win could be, well, Michelle, today uh, I did this exercise on speaking where I had to go blah, 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 like that, you know, so I'm going to jump. And, and I go, it was really silly, but I made my way through it, and it was a touchdown. So that's one. Michelle is doing this awesome course with Bonnie Christine about fabric de design because Michelle is a certified fabric designer. And she's finishing off these courses where she's learning how to draw on a tablet, a computer tablet and all that type of stuff. And she'll come in and say, hey, today I learned this new stroke. That's it. That's the win. I learned this new stroke. And so for the traders, I tell you the story for the, you know, because traders, we need to look at the win. What is a win? And a win isn't necessarily whether you made a profit or not, but how well did you trade your system? Did you get a 10 0? Did you get a you know A plus for trading your system, regardless of what happened? And if you did, that's a win mm. from my in my book. So there's a thought, you know, take that and there's a thought. So how would you know if you traded your system well? Well, what are some of the key things that, that you think that somebody would be able to to grade themselves well? Uh, like is it just a, a feeling of, oh yeah, I, I feel like oh, I it. haven't I haven't it basically, it, heavens no, it is basically how well did you follow your rules? Mm, so they need okay. to have rules first. You have to have rules. And so I have my six key pillar rules, which is basically I, I define what stock I'm going to trade, you know, what I'm going to buy or, buy or sell, two, mm -hmm. when I'm going to enter, when I'm going to exit, what strategy I'm going to use, and my expectations of that strategy. And then number six is mentors. And we'll talk about that in a, in a second. But that aspect, that concept is one, if, a, if I trade a stock that doesn't meet my criteria or an ETF that is not in my pool, mm -hmm. I have not followed my rules. So I would, I would check myself down on that. And I could, you could literally lay out a grading criteria of, uh, you know, now if you have 27 rules to get in and out, you're way over complex. So, mm. yeah, again. Oh, my God, you make me remember uh, well, <laughs> going back uh, probably about 15 years now. Uh, at one point, I had uh, 100 different entry rules yeah. and about 70 or 80 different cell rules. Yeah. And so, uh, and that's where I developed my, my rules on one page. I have four rules to enter, four rules to uh, five rules to exit, and it all fits on one page. Mm -hmm. And it's so clear. And, you know, I clarify, I simplify so I can multiply. That is basically the element of how I develop my system. 
And uh, but, but you can actually a person can literally grade themselves, you know, grade yourself on, on how well you followed your plan. You know, did you exit too early? Did you, you know, did you get a twitchy mouse finger and and pull out, you know, and and, and then to have it continue on and hit your original profit target? And and so and the other thing on grading that is at the end of the day or the end of the week, ask yourself, how well did I trade? What were my, you know, what were the great trades? What were the not so great trades? What have I learned? What can I learn? What do I have to do to improve? And it takes us out of that, you know, that aspect of just thinking about, you know, did I make a profit or didn't make a profit? It, it, it eliminates that because I think Mark Minovini, Mark Douglas, a lot of the, there was a lot of marks out there, uh, <laughs> but they 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 both talk about focus on on a very simple system, focus on the process, not the outcome. Successful people always focus on the process. So let that you know get into your uh, beliefs because that way will, that'll help shape what you got to do. So, so you ready to learn about the TQQ thing or do you have any, other, yeah. uh, any additional question? This is a good session today. It I, is. It always is. I, I'm learning a lot. I will ask uh, folks, you know, like if you're dialing in, no matter where you're dialing in from, uh, you know, if you know another, you know, excellent trader out there that does podcasts or anything kind of stuff or anybody who does podcasts in the trading arena, or I'd really like to find a sports coach to come in and, 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 and be on with us, Mike, because we would like to invite, start inviting guests. And yeah, so absolutely. if you know anybody out there, put a bug in their ear to say, Hey, you need to be on Mike and Dennis's trading truths podcast because mm. folks, this is going somewhere and I hope you are getting a lot out of it. And, uh, and who knows, you know, come back next week and I, and I, and I may have another one of those, uh, bear my soul type of stories. I've got a lot of them. No. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell them sometime, Mike, about the 12 times that I've almost died. Would that be fun? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> uh, let, yeah. Uh, let's keep it at 12. Okay. Yeah. So hey, let's jump in. Let's jump into uh, the next section. You know, Mike, my applaud you for everything that you 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 know you chatted about. I think it gives people a lot of things. I hope you're keeping notes out there in your journal. Uh, but I'm going to talk about overcoming hesitation and, and and excuses that oh, it's too late. I can't start. You know this type. It reminds me of a story real, real quick of a friend of mine who who uh, was a businesswoman who retired, had a medical issue. She retired and she was on Social Security and she was getting her uh, uh, health insurance through one of the Obamacare things. Right. Mm -hmm. And and uh, she had the funds to be able to start generating a couple of thousand dollars a month easily. And she's doing actually trading covered calls. Oh, okay. But she said, "Well, no. If I if I if I generate a couple of extra thousand dollars a month, my health insurance will go up because it'll take me into a different income bracket, right? So her, how much would her health insurance go up? Her in, health insurance would have gone up about maybe fifty dollars a month, right?" So, so do the math there, but do you see the mindset? Yeah. The mindset of I would rather avoid a fifty dollar charge than gain an extra two thousand dollars a month. Think about how that two thousand dollar month would change her lifestyle, her lifestyle. And so, I want to show you. I, I have been working on this particular system for a long time. I've been following it. We use it with the autopilot trading. Uh, members, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Mike and I are going to still be on the side there. There we go. 
Yeah. And what this is, this is a uh, a strategy and system I used with TQQ. Now, going back, I'm going to give you a highlight of it initially. And I'm also going to see if I can get my pencil working on there. I don't know if you can see it or not. If that'll pop up. Do you think you could make the uh, zoom in on the spreadsheet a little bit? Uh, uh, like if you go to view I, and to go to the, set it to like maybe one. Oh, there you go. That that's that's great. Okay, there we go. So what this does is basically I'm going to slide over to the right here, and let me see if I can. Can I actually draw on this? Can you see it? Oh, you can see it. Notice this pile right here. This is basically if somebody would have bought it at the beginning of the year and sold TQQ. TQQQ at the end of the year, 2011, when it, the, the entity became available, negative 8%. We'll go on down here. Fairly nice return. Average return over the years, 51%. Notice 2022. Uh, yeah, know, that's 79% drop, right? Uh, just, you know, not, not a pretty sight. That's the big problem with buy and hold. Now, let's just apply a simple swing trading process. And what my research uh, revealed, Mike, was that on TQQ and several other of the leverage ETFs, mm -hmm. they typically provide a 25% or more swing every year somewhere between three to six times. Okay. So if a person's using a very simple weekly chart and looking for momentum shifts and then jumping on, even if they only pick up half of the move, half of the move, it, this is what it compounds out to, 114% in 2011. <clears throat> and as you can see, going down through here, you know. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So, so that's not even the full move, that's just half the move? That is half, see, yeah, see up here, it says half the move. Wow. <laughs> and, but compounding, it's compounding, okay? So, so, but look what happens when in 2022, yeah, that's the, crazy. the return compounding, as you see it right here. No, 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 no right here. Right there. No, I don't, yeah. Hold on a second. Let me roll it across the table here. There we go. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. I mean, that that is really amazing, but how hard would it be to do that? One of the things that I, I you know, I won't say I regret, but I'm glad it came along. Uh, if I was, you know, just starting to learn how to trade right now, I I think I would not even look at stocks. I think yeah. I would look specifically at these leverage ETFs or just learn how to trade the ETFs. Why? Well, the first reason is no big shifts with earnings. Okay, that's huge. Yeah. The only real thing that we, you know, uh, market mover is typically the Fed meeting or some mm -hmm. bad news. You know, black swan events we really can't take, a, a, a take into account. But I want to share a couple of things with you. And let's roll through this. And I've got this little thing. Yeah, there we go. So a uh, buy and hold strategy on the leverage ETFs could rip your face off. So have a plan that gets you out of harm's way. Swing trade the leverage ETF, index ETFs. You could trade it in both directions. However, let's keep it simple. If I'm making over 100% compounded per year, do I really want to mess with the inverse leverage ETFs? I don't think so. Uh, what would happen in 2022 following the autopilot trading system? Well, this is what would happen is here is the percent run. Let me show those to you. Let me. Can you see that or does it need to be blown up? Yeah, I could see that. Okay. So I've got basically these areas that are lined up Whoops, okay. let's go back. Let's go back. And they associate with, uh, da, 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 da. what am I looking, there we go. And 
each one of these purple lines over here oh, associates good. with this full return. Okay, so the first, you know, January 2022, there was a 30% run on the TQQs. Now, if you're not familiar with the TQQQs, it is a three time leverage ETF of the QQQ, which is the uh, ETF for the NASDAQ. Uh, my research also has shown me that this entity performs better over the years to the, than the spiders do. do. And secondly, they also, uh, this uh, uh, per, uh, performs better than the Russell. Although the Russell, it's um, leverage ETF, bullish leverage ETF, TNA, mm -hmm. besides being really fun to say, is also a, uh, <laughs> my subtle humor there, Mike, okay, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> is uh, it, it's really close to TQQ, but you don't have to do all three. You don't have to do all three. And uh, so then I basically half the move, simply just taking half the move, first with 15%. The biggest one was 33%. And seeing that and how that functions across these areas, and majority of them, the simple trigger, the simple trigger was this, is, is just taking the trigger off of my momentum indicator here. We had a, had a momentum shift here. You see it just lines up perfectly. And I'm not... Even, we're not even trying to catch the absolute bottom of the, you know, the swing low. We mm -hmm. just want to get in somewhere in that, in that range and then write it, write it. Yeah. Uh, so this is something, you know, could anybody do this? I think so. Now, would they have to learn a little bit of stuff to be able to do that? Yeah, they would. But at the same time, with all the tools that are out there, I think about Thinkorswim uh, that's going over to Schwab. They have a wonderful uh, um, paper trading, you know, system where you can, you know, paper trade to learn a system mm -hmm. without, you know, without losing any money. Um, or and they also have a uh, on-demand feature where you can actually go back and rehearse. And practices and practices, and Mark Douglas and his wife said that you need over 400 trades or simulated trades to really hone in on on getting you know being really great at your system. So anyway, so this I just want to share this with with everybody. This is a really you know, like I said, this is a actually this was a daily chart. But I would run off of a weekly chart, similar type situation. But as I said, this was one. Well, you can see there was five different opportunities in the, the year of 2022. And I think I basically, hold on just a second, and I will pop this off, take that, run over here, do this. And this was back in... Uh, Okay, I'm sorry. What was this? Yeah, this was 2022. And then uh, 2022. Oh, this is SQQQ, which is the inverse, which actually provides something else. But the returns really weren't as good. And I think the last one was, oh, just a little bit of compounding. If you started out with... Uh, hundred, you know, a little bit over one hundred fifty thousand dollars. What it could grow to over that period of time. That's on yeah, this one over here, and that's so, just a year. Yeah. Yes. So, so if you feel like you're behind the eight ball, yeah, and you almost tripled your money at that, 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 right? Like that, that was there. That's why I wanted to share that story in that picture, Mike, because if you think you're, regardless of how old you are or, or, or young you are, 
if you get on top of the right vehicle, you can do really well. And so, hey, we better start wrapping this up. So mindset meeting methods, and I'll interject that finding the right Okay, let's say you are, you think you're past your prime. Well, let me tell you, you're not past your prime. One of my heroes of faith is Caleb. Okay, Caleb at 85 years old, after coming out of the wilderness, is sitting there practicing with his sword. While when his, you know, practicing with his sword so he can go up into the promised land because he's going to fight, right? What a great legacy he left for his sons and daughters seeing dad at 85 working out being strong and saying family we are going to the top of the mountain so it's like i said if you may think it's too late but it's not it's never too late to set your family on a family legacy of building wealth so what bring in the mindset, Mike, you know, put the icing on the cake, man. <laughs> I don't know if I could do much better than that story. Uh, get, get as much of that in your space, in your mind uh, as you can. Mm. Uh, the, 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 all this stuff is sticky. Well, whatever is in your environment starts to become sticky. If you have great, uh inspirational stories like that one that dennis just told then that will stick if you have uh, things that are not so positive those can start to stick to it and we want to be mindful uh of that um mm. that that so thought all are all thoughts sticky both the the Untruth. I think, be. I think that if you're in a, a den of negativity, it could become a corrosive. Wow. That's even worse uh, than sticky. Yeah. And, and uh, I think that, the, and that's not to say that there's no redemption. I think that there is redemption. And I think that, you know, just after, uh, you know, the Easter Sunday was yesterday. Yeah. And so the, the ultimate story of uh, redemption and resurrection, I Why think not? that well, we have the ability to to do that for uh, the, to come out of a bad situation and have a new life. Yeah, yeah. In so many different ways. Yeah. Uh, but it's being willing to leave the past behind and step into the new. Mm. Be willing. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Be willing. The uh, a lot of people are risk adverse, but by being risk adverse, they actually risk more than learning how to be smart about risk. In other words, calculate right. risk and all that type of stuff. And the I'm thing about it is. What? Uh, uh, like a, a picture if you had a bag of seeds and uh, you have all the potential for it to grow, but you're worried about, oh, I don't know if the planting over here is the right time. Uh, yeah. You know, Ooh, so, yeah. so let, let me let me start studying a little bit more. Let, let me go on, on YouTube and, and find something of how to do it. Oh, well, this person says to do it this way. This person says to do it that way. And months go by and you never plant the seeds. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you would have just been better off planting them. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, if a person's waiting for perfection, they'll never take any action whatsoever. Never take action uh, because the, the the you know life life is 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 sloppy, uh, and 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 the market especially is sloppy. You know that. I mean, what what can we plan on? We can plan when we're going to enter. We can plan where we want to exit. You know, those are two things that we control. Mm -hmm. But everything in between, we don't control. The market's going to do what the market wants to do. So, Mike, let's see. Any questions out there from anybody? 
Wow, we covered a lot today, guys, uh, guys out there. And uh, any questions for Mike or myself? Can't think of well, here. Nobody, I don't see anybody writing right now. We look like we have mostly people that are join us on on looks like we have most we have about 83 people on the board i'm really thankful for that oh, wow. and uh pop, 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 pop. i think we looks like we've got people on hey Jarrett, how you doing kip how you doing i'm third <laughs> i love that and so they're in from yeah he's on 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 uh on some of your links mike and so okay hey hey Excellent. Hey, guys, and I just ask you to, one, is let people know that that uh, uh, this podcast will be over on Spotify and also to link in to, to you know, Mike and myself. Mike and I, I'll, I'll, I'll finish with one question, Mike, is right. for you. Question for okay. me. All right. Both. Yeah. You and I provide mentoring and training services, right? Yes. And and I want to back myself out of the way, and I hope you back yourself out of the way. Let's say somebody is you know doesn't you know want you know our mentoring service. Okay. What? How, how else? What other mechanisms? can they follow to get some mentoring? Because I mean, I think eventually once they get to a certain level, they're going to want live one on, you know, mentoring from some, you know, yeah. folks like you and me, but yeah, you've got to get around somebody, right? Well, whether it's you, whether it's me, whether, whether it's somebody else, uh, mentoring is something that, that is one of the key building blocks to, to growth and getting to, to, beyond the level where you're at that okay. that's something that i that didn't do for for so many years it, it, it took me until i finally found the ibd meetup group that just stumbled upon that and then it started to organically happen right but, uh, it, for so many years uh, like going more than, than 10 years uh, i didn't want to trust anyone mm. so that stunted my growth for so long had i that, had mentors and accepted mentors, uh, I, my growth would have happened. So uh, there, there's the part of, well, who do I trust? And, um, you know, that then there's also uh, the affordability hurdle, right? Like, oh, well, how much do, do these things cost? So like, yeah, if, right. if there's people that are, that are in your space that, uh, that, like, you know somebody and you could go and talk to them and start to develop a, even like a, a study buddy thing. Right. right? right. Like well, where, he, like maybe you're at a similar level with somebody and you're, you want to uh, bounce ideas off of somebody that could be a way to sure. grow too. Um, but having someone else that you could speak to on a regular basis, bounce ideas off of, get great feedback from uh, that's instrumental in your, your growth. So, well, what about dead mentors? <laughs> uh, those could be good too. You're not going to get much feedback from them, but uh, they, they often have a lot of great things to say. This, yeah, they, that I agree with that one, and especially on getting started. I mean, like you know, Bill, Bill and Neil, you know, passed away here, you know, within the past year or so, and uh, reading his book is just really inspirational. But Mike's absolutely right. If even if you're reading a book from, you know, from a mentor, from a great trader in the past, Jesse Livermore's story or whomever, Charles Dow's story, it, it would be really good to have at least a friend or a buddy to bounce that against. So, OK, Mike, we are at the end of our hour. We only meant to go for 50 minutes, guys, but I hope you enjoyed today's session. Uh, I know we'll I did. I always enjoy these. We'll put some links uh, on Mike's uh, YouTube channel and my YouTube channel and over on the uh, uh, Spotify. We'll put some links that uh, 
Uh, you can, you know, find out about our books, find out about some of our other offerings. Uh, just, you know, hey, become part of, we would love to have, I know Mike and I both speaking, you know, if Michael, let me speak. We would both love to have you, you know, uh, let us help you become the hero of your own story when it comes to trading. And all we can do is help point out the landmines that we have already discovered. Uh, and so you don't blow your legs off while you're trying to climb the mountain to success in, in trading. So Mike, got anything else? Uh, that's, uh, that's it for me. Uh, it's been great talking to you, Dennis, uh, as always. And you, well, well, what a truly great blessing uh, it is to, to have the, you with us here to have this show. And uh, thank you to everybody that's uh, here with us today. Okay. So, hey, aloha and God bless everybody. We will see you in two weeks. Hang on, Mike.